This is the amazing thing about the Mara, is of course the fact that on a good cat day, it'll provide you with cats. Or at least, it had provided us with a cat. Dave, she's gone. She's vanished. It's all right, we've got a second lioness off to the left, and my first encounter with the sausages. There you go, here we are. The sausage tree pride, or the sausage pride, that are now forever after going to be called the sausages. Hello ladies. Apparently they have a buffalo kill that you would have seen this morning, and, excitingly enough, the prospect of two very tiny cubs and one male of the dominant coalition of this area. Uh, the, this pride is dominated by four males. Oh, there's a cub, there's a cub in the road. Hello. You're definitely not brand new. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I was so hoping they were going to, because it's hot this afternoon, I was hoping they were going to be up in the trees, escaping the biting tsetse flies and getting a little bit of shade at the same time. But there they go making their way back towards a buffalo that at this point I guess to them smells delicious but to us smells a little rotten. I'm distracted because I don't know what starling that is calling. Hold on. I can hear it. I just can't see it. Must be a superb. Tony, you would like to know what the tastiest thing is to eat in the Mara? Mm -hmm. Well, Tony, I have to tell you that Pup and Goat is, is pretty low down on the list at this point. Um, it's Ugali. It's Ugali. Ugali. And um, Cabbage is also quite low on the list at this point, uh, due largely to the effects that it's had on the digestive system of the staff. But for the animals, the most delicious thing is about to arrive in the form of wildebeest. And the reason I should say that's the most delicious thing for them is because they're just everywhere and it becomes so much easier for them to catch something and keep little chaps like this one well fed. I don't think lions or leopards or cheetah or any of the predators really have a particular preference. A meal of hippo is probably quite good for them because it's very fatty meat, but they're not fussy. And there's certain prides that apparently specialize during the sort of the green season when the wildebeest aren't here. They'll specialize in things like warthogs, uh, I assume you're talking about what's the most delicious thing for the animals rather than for us. Okay, I think we should try and get a little bit closer. You'll have to, Dave will give you a view of the scenery. I obviously, I have to duck in order to drive because we're back in Chica. Chiku, what is wrong with me? It's because it's Paka and Chiku. I get confused. All right, hold on everybody. Oops, sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca, one of our talented directors, is accompanying us this afternoon in order to make sure that we behave ourselves and get the shots that she needs. What up? <laughs> Beck says, what up? <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, of course, these animals are unfamiliar to me. So... I need to sort of approach quite cautiously. I don't want to scare them. I don't know these lions, so I'm going to do my standard approach, although they seem to be perfectly... This little one there just disappeared behind Mum's head. It's okay, it'll come back out again. Jeremiah, you say in this perfect example um, that it is amazing how they just disappear in the grass. I know. Imagine the, what this poor wildebeest must go through. Just imagine. Or any animal out here. You're walking and all of, a, all of a sudden you are... ...serious advantage. Oh! See, just the talk of hunting apparently has exhausted that lioness. Hey, little ones. All looking a bit hot and bothered and covered in flies. Oh, what will be interesting is what 